mighty group this morning. <laughs> mighty, mighty. Good morning. And, and welcome to those of you who are here with us in person and those of us who are joining us online. Welcome. We are so glad that uh, you are here with us. We're going to continue to keep praying for Ukraine. Um, I would invite you to check our website uh, where you will find other ways to support um, Ukraine through PWSD, um, specific prayers that you can be praying. Um, and perhaps this new series that we're starting is very uh, pertinent. It's, it's kind of, um, yeah, even more than we knew. Because today we're beginning a new series entitled The Way Matters. I'm going to begin by warning you that today's message may leave you a tad frustrated um, at the end because I'm going to raise a problem, but I'm not going to give you a solution today because I don't know about you, but chances are, certainly in my life, you can't solve major conflicts and problems in 30 minutes or less. So, um, so you may very well find yourself frustrated at the end. That's a little bit of the intent. Welcome to Amberly. <laughs> so, okay, so let me ask you this question. It may sound a little bit weird coming from your pastor, uh, but let me ask you. Here we go. Do you ever feel like Christianity isn't working? Do you ever feel like Christianity isn't working? So you feel like you're serving Jesus, you're following, you're following Jesus, you're trying to trust in God, and it isn't working the way you you thought it would. Today, let's get really honest. I wonder, if we're really honest, how many of you might say, at times, I get a little burned out by church, right? The church stuff that happens. Or, God, why, why aren't you answering my prayers the way you answer the prayers of all those other people? Or, God, I'm doing everything right I'm trying to be good. I'm trying to be faithful, and everything still seems to go wrong. Does it ever feel like Christianity isn't working? It could, it could show up in a number of ways, right? It could be the, the young boy who goes to church. He goes with his family to church, and he does all of the church stuff, right? He's in vacation Bible camp, and, and he, um, he draws pictures of David and Goliath in kid zone, and he goes to youth group, and he has his first kiss at the youth retreat playing truth dare for the glory of God. Um, and, and he's plugged into church, and he's trying to do things right, and then he goes home. And, and he sees in his home inconsistencies of what he's heard at church. And he sees his parents fighting and sinfulness and bickering and all sorts of things that just don't make sense to him. And he's praying that his parents, you know, the marriage can stay strong, that his family would stay together and his parents get a divorce. And he wonders, God, did you even hear me? I mean, God, are you there? God, did you hear my prayers? Does Christianity even work? It could be, it could be a couple who do all the things right. You know, they, they go to a life group, and then they start leading a life group. And then one day, one of them loses their job. And then they lose their child, and the losses that they experience are overwhelming, and they lose their marriage, and both of them end up asking, where is God? Does Christianity even work? It may not be so dramatic. I'm guessing for many of us, it's not that dramatic. Uh, it, it might be that you go to church and you, you do your daily devotions and you're even on a streak. I'm not talking a wordle streak. I'm talking, I'm talking a streak with your devotions, right? And, and, you, and you have this streak going on and you, and you often listen to WDCX or 100.3 Life FM. Uh, you, you've, you've got your Amberly mud that you are proudly drinking out of and you give out Amberly pens wherever you go. You, you have a decent job and you have a decent place to live and you have a decent car and you have decent friends and, and you even go on a decent vacation every once in a while. You're serving God, 
but you're still not happy. You're not fulfilled. And you start to ask yourself, does Christianity even work? If you've ever been there and wondered, is there a better way? I want to bring a message today that I pray will speak to your heart. If you're hurting or you're overwhelmed or you're confused or discouraged, I pray that the words from, from John 14, um, Jesus spoke these words. I want to read them to you. Starting at verse 1, Jesus said this, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. And then, and then Thomas pipes up. Thomas always gets a bad rap, but I, I mean, I really like Thomas because Thomas actually says the things that we don't have the guts to say, right? And so Jesus says, you know where I'm going. And then verse 5, Thomas said to him, Lord, we, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Verse 6, Jesus answered a very famous, very, very important verse. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Let's pray. Father, we ask that by the power of your spirit and the truth of your word that you would lead us, your children, into a better way because the way matters. We pray this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So how many of you would agree that the way that we do something, the way that we say something matters? Agree? We agree, right? And, and you can tell the truth to somebody, and you can do it in a way that's ineffective or rude. And I hear this all the time from crazy, mean Christians. And, 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 I, and I know it sounds like an oxymoron to be a crazy, mean Christian, but, I mean, they tell the truth of Jesus, but they do it in such a way that, you know, like, you know, God loves you, but you're a sinner, <laughs> right? I mean, the fact is we all are sinners, but that might not be the most effective way. I've been on the other side of that. It's not the most effective way. The way matters. If you're not married, you're going to find that out one day. <laughs> the way matters, right? You can say, yeah, you look fine. Or you can say, oh, you look fine. <laughs> one leads this way and the other one leads that way, right? I mean, the way you say things matters, um, and you have to say it the right way. The way matters. As Christians, I don't know if you've noticed, but generally when you think of the way and the truth and the life, we generally focus on the truth, uh, at least preachers do. Um, and it's important because you'll, you know, you know, we know the truth is important, right? Because the truth will set you free. free. Amen. And, and we often talk about the truth of Jesus, but we rarely, rarely talk about the way of Jesus. Jesus is, yes, the only way to the Father and the one, you know, and that's one way to preach it. But I also believe that living the way that Jesus lived is a reflection of the truth that Jesus taught. We often talk about the truth, and he said, and of what he said, but we overlook the way he lived. Do you know that the first century Christians, do you know what they were called? They were, let me give you a hint. In, in the book of Acts, they weren't called Christians. They weren't called religious people. They weren't called Bible thumpers or holy rollers or they weren't called Jesus freaks. They were called, in the book of Acts, people of the way. People of the way. And it's fascinating to me because when you look, when you look at the way they lived, their goal was not um, right theology. Their goal was not morality, right, strong morality. Their goal was to live and love the way Jesus lived and loved. If you think about the way that Jesus lived, 
as we read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and we, and we look at the truth he taught and the way that he lived, and then we compare it to the way that most of us live, I bet we'd find some differences. No offense, right? I mean, you think about the way Jesus lived. When Jesus interacted with people, he was full of joy. And most of us are full of stress and anxiety, right? You didn't see him going around saying, oh, the economy is falling apart. Oh, the Roman Empire. He told us, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about it. God's already there. God's got it covered. Most of us are, are freaking out all the time. Some would report that this is the most anxious generation in the history of the world. Jesus, as he walked along, saw someone in need, and what would he do? He would stop, and he would spend time with them. And I don't know about you, but most people I know say, I don't got time for that. I don't got time to stop and do that. Jesus was consumed with an ongoing, intimate relationship, intimate, intimate fellowship with his Father. And personally, can't speak for anybody else, but I can tell you, for me, sometimes, I mean, I can't go three minutes without my text going or being distracted by, by something on social media or, or, or thinking about what my next meal is going to be, right? Jesus was consumed with an intimate relationship. Now, imagine, imagine if Jesus were like most of us. Imagine he was all depressed, you know, hanging out with his buddies going, hey, man, Mark, you know, I am so sick of these sandals. My feet are getting so dirty. Like, if I had me a pair of off-whites, oh, man, I'd be fly. I'd be so cool, right? People would come to me, and, boy, I could really preach if I had off-whites. They're the ones to have. Imagine you're scrolling through Instagram, right? And, and, and Jesus, is scro- Jesus is scrolling through Instagram. And he looks at, you know, JTB, John the Baptist. He says, oh, that guy's got more followers than I've got. I don't get it. How could that possibly be, right? He's not worthy to untie my off-whites. Imagine Jesus heals people and he comes home and he says, oh, bro, I am exhausted. You know, the last guy I healed, oh, his breath. I need me a cold brewski. We can't even get our head around that. It's unfathomable for us to think of Jesus that way, right? Jesus is not just the truth and the life. He is the way to the Father. And the first century Christians were focused on living and loving the way Jesus lived and loved. But the reality is, we can try to live and love the way Jesus did, but do it the wrong way. We can do the right thing the wrong way. Now, when Emily and Tyler were really little, um, before they were in school, I'm, I'm, I, I can picture it so vividly. We were walking. Uh, we were going for a walk. They were just ahead of me, walking up ahead. And, um, and Emily just pushes Tyler off the sidewalk. He falls onto the grass right? And Tyler did what every little brother would do after being pushed down by his big sister. He got up and he pushed her back, right? And so, you know, this little battle ensued. And so I step into this and I, you know, I'm looking at them trying to break it up. And Emily looks up at me and says, I was trying to stop them from stepping in the dog poo. (laughs) Right thing, trying to protect her brother from the dog poo. (laughs) Wrong way, right? 2 Samuel 6, King David uh, and his people were attempting to bring um, the ark of God to Jerusalem, where the people of Israel would go and pray. They were doing the right thing. They they wanted to, 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 to make this move, which is what was to happen. However, they were going about it the wrong way. They didn't carry the ark the way God had commanded They didn't treat the ark the way God had prescribed. In in their zeal, they moved the the, the, the ark without waiting for God's timing on this. So they did it, they did the right thing, but they didn't do it God's way. Right thing, wrong way. And how many of us, how many of us over the years desire to do God's work 
to be obedient, to be faithful, but end up burned out on church. Worse yet, we're pulled away from the one that we are striving to connect with. And if you can relate to that, perhaps the way we were doing the work of God might be what was destroying the work of God in us. Maybe it's our insecurities or our unsolved, unresolved hurts, or, or maybe it's our deepest feelings of whatever, right, that are distracting us from the work of the Holy Spirit who wants to strengthen us and to draw us close to God and to make us effective in the world. Or maybe it's not just the way that we're doing the work, but maybe it's our schedule and the pace that's destroying the intimacy that God wants for us to enjoy in him. There's a verse in the Old Testament that speaks to the way that we might do things. Proverbs 14, verse 12. There is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. There is a right way that can be there is a right way that can be done the wrong way. So if you're trying to do the right things and you're finding yourself exhausted and worn out and pulling away from God rather than leaning in, let me read you a verse from Matthew's gospel, Matthew 11, verses 28 to 30. And these words, these are the words of Jesus, okay? And this is what Jesus says. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. So if you're worn out, if you're exhausted, and you're wondering where Christianity is, actually come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. And he says, I will give you rest. And then let me warn you that the next part of the verse gets a little weird. Then he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus says, take my yoke. Now, I don't, I don't know if you know what a yoke is. Uh, a yoke is a, a wooden cross piece that's, that joins two animals together to accomplish more work, right? And when they're joined together, um, they well, they had to work at the same pace, right? So it kind of went over two animals and they'd have to work at the same pace. And Jesus is saying, come to me, I'm going to give you a work tool. Uh, if you're exhausted, I'm going to put a work tool around your neck. Isn't that weird? Because if I'm exhausted, when I'm exhausted, <laughs> I want a massage. <laughs> I want to sit in the hot tub. I want to go on a vacay, Right? I don't want a work tool around my neck. And what's interesting about a yoke is there's no single yoke. Anytime there was a yoke, it was for two animals to be joined together. And what Jesus is saying is if you're worn out, if you're burned out, if you know this isn't working, come and join me. Come and join me. And I want to give you a better way because the way matters. Listen, he's not saying, you know, be joined to a schedule. He's not saying be joined to a religion. He's saying be joined to Jesus. Not just to believe in the truth, which I hope you will, but to also live the way that Jesus lived. And some of you might push back. You know, you might say, yeah, but, but Jesus wasn't a single mom with two jobs. Fair enough. Or Jesus didn't have a sto student loan, you know, coming out ying yang. Or, or, or Jesus didn't have a boss that was, you know, Satan incarnate. Like, he, whatever it is, all of that's fair. But Jesus still had a pretty big assignment, right? To be perfect, to save the world. I think we can learn from Jesus. Called by God to be without sin, to give his life, Jesus loved freely and still disconnected from the crowds to get alone to be intimate with God. He had long meals with people that he loved, and I have been known to sit in front of my computer and eat lunch in five minutes. 
Jesus had deep conversations. Jesus stopped and listened to those who were hurting, who were in need. If you ever wake up and and think, you know, there's got to be a better way. There's just got to be a better way. I can tell you there is. And it's not just the truth of Jesus, but it's the truth expressed in the way that Jesus lived. So today I'm not going to give you a quick fix. In fact, what I want you to do is I want you just to sit with it for a moment. I want you to sit with the frustration long enough that you get fed up. You get fed up of the pace, fed up of the stress, fed up with the anxiety, fed up with the fear, fed up with being exhausted, fed up with going back to promises that you made seven years ago that you keep coming back to, fed up with the way that you're doing life. I can't solve your problems today or ever, but I'm going to tell you where we're going to go in the upcoming weeks And I do hope that you will be here, either in person or online, because together we are going to get closer to God. You know, most of us, most of us are rushed and stressed and overwhelmed. So next week, we're going to talk about an unhurried rhythm of grace. And most Christians I know are overcome by temptation and feel far from God and they feel spiritually dry or dull. So we're going to talk about the unbroken fellowship with God the Father. Now, how do we enjoy an intimate, ongoing awareness of God's presence? Week number four, we're going to look at uh, an un because I think most most Christians are are unfocused and preoccupied and distracted by all sorts of can I say stupid stuff, right? So we're going to talk about the uncluttered pursuit of God's mission. How do we stay on task, growing to become who God wants us to be and what we can do, how we can do what God has called us to do? And then in week five, most people I know um, are either regretting a past they can't change or they are worrying about a future they can't control. And they're often present physically, but, but... somewhere else mentally, right? So we are going to talk about undivided attention, being in the moment just as Jesus was. If you're tired of the grind, tired of the stress, miserable and afraid, if you're angry and anxious, if you have too many problems, you have too much weight to carry, if you have too much pain to bear, there is a better way. There is a better way. Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. There is a better way, and his name is Jesus. You know, the Bible never says, be busy and know that I am God, or be rushed and know that I am God, or be anxious and overwhelmed and know that I am God. The Bible says what? Be still. Be still and know that I am God. And so in our hurt and in our pain and in our disappointment and in our loss, God will show us the way. We may, we may be doing the work of God that can be destroying the work of God in us. There's a better way, and the way matters. So my invitation to you is actually God's invitation to you. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus, and he will give you rest. Amen? Let's pray. Holy God, thank you for your word, which has the power to breathe life into our weariness and fear. As we pray for ourselves, we also pray for our families and our community and our country. We pray for countries that are Today, in utter chaos, and Lord, we pray for Ukraine. We pray for peace. We pray for leaders to be still and know that you are God, you and you alone. We pray that they would know the way, your way, because the way matters. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.